Hello, and welcome to the QLab tutorial series. My name is Jason Knox, and I'm a composer and sound designer. I've used QLab for the past few years to add music and sound effects to live theater productions, and I'm happy to have this opportunity to take you on a guided tour of QLab. QLab is a software program that allows users to program sound files, video files, and MIDI control messages in a way that is structured specifically for the requirements of live performance. Precision and flexibility wrapped in an intuitive user interface makes QLab an ideal solution for a variety of applications, including theater performances, museum installations, advertising displays, and much more. In these tutorials, I'm going to introduce you to version 2 of QLab. There are many new features in version 2, and the intent of this tutorial series is to get you up and running as quickly and effectively as possible. I'd like to take a moment to explain a few things about getting the most out of these tutorials. First of all, understand that there are two components to this tutorial series. The videos, which you're obviously watching right now, and the QLab tutorial series file. The QLab file, which we'll also refer to as the workspace, will give you hands-on experience with every feature that is explained in the tutorials. The videos in the QLab workspace are available for download from the Figure 53 website, so you can easily explore the material at your own pace. To use the tutorials, you'll need to have QLab installed on your computer. If you don't already have it, go ahead and grab the free version from the Figure 53 website so you can play along with the tutorials. Once you've downloaded the free version of QLab and the tutorial workspace, you can make whatever changes you want to the workspace. However, keep in mind that if you save the workspace file, you'll need a license to reactivate the Pro features available within the tutorials. The QLab license options will be discussed in more detail in a future tutorial, and the next tutorial, Setup Basics, will help you get QLab and the tutorial workspace up and running. Another important aspect of this tutorial series that I'd like to mention is the use of keyboard shortcuts. QLab has a number of keyboard shortcuts available that can greatly increase your speed on the program, and in the thick of designing a project, it's to your advantage to be as fast on QLab as possible so you can concentrate your time and energy on the creative needs of the project rather than navigating the software. I would highly recommend that you force yourself to use the keyboard shortcuts, and in order to reinforce this, I'm going to be using keyboard shortcuts as often as possible for navigation and other tasks. And just so you're not confused by seeing events occur on the screen without a mouse click, you'll see the keyboard shortcut that was used briefly displayed in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. One last thing that I'd like to mention is that although I'm going to be sharing a lot of information and making a number of recommendations throughout these tutorials, there's not one right way to use QLab. I program and organize my materials in QLab based upon my experiences and the recommendations of others, but never be afraid to explore working methods and techniques that might better suit the way that you work. So with all of that in mind, let's move on to QLab.